black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Enzo V, I watch all the vids, enjoy all types and freedom. Did I mess the story? Miss regarding your name change? Yeah, the name change was just an experiment, honestly. Basically, with the name change, I guess this is a good time to address that. It was just uh it was just off a whim. I just basically wanted to see how it would affect anything um i should have kept it longer probably because i do want to see how it affects like getting placed in like the algorithm and i don't know i just feel like the words black and hoodie relative to a white man just might be stifling my growth a little bit i feel like people probably see black hoodie and then they don't understand that it's really because I wore black hoodies, the clothing item. They probably hear the name or come to the channel and think like, oh, it's this white guy trying to be hood or like cool or whatever, which isn't, isn't the case at all. But, you know, people make presumptuous general opinions and then it's like, oh, I don't want to rock with this white guy calling himself black hoodie. So the idea behind the name change was like, will it will it allow me to have like a further wider scope a bigger audience can will will i can it affect my my actual exposure on the platform in a more positive light in a more like just general like like less individual light like stay true would have been more of like a movement thing like it could have been a wide scope of like a movement that people could get behind like a like just staying true to yourself like not like, for example, this person saying shit in the comments about, like, don't do your music, just do mukbangs and eating. Like, that's not, like, music is true to me, so that's what I'm going to do. Stay true to myself, have personal integrity, do the things that I love, whether or not you fuck with it or not. If your taste is for it, I don't know, but if you don't like it, I don't fucking care, you know what I mean? So it's like, stay true, like, just do the things you love, whether or not people judge you for them or not. Hence, just, like, taking your own path, me doing mukbang and stuff and music and doing and cooking and trying to be creative. And I feel like Stay True would be more of like a movement of just like inspiration to people doing things that actually just make them happy rather than like, you know, being suffocated by the bullshit, being suffocated by another person's opinions, having like your flame snuffed out by society, just shit like that, just remaining true to yourself. So I wanted to see where that would go, but then here comes the issue is that like, I've branded myself as Black Hoodie, which is like, it's fine, I understand that, but um, I don't know, I just don't know that it like, I feel like it's holding me back. I feel like the name is probably holding me back uh, in terms of my success. And uh, I don't know if it's the platform that's that maybe doesn't like like doesn't like recommending the name because maybe youtube is a little bit racist or something but who knows i don't i don't know the truth um it's frustrating though because i put out i think my content is leaps and bounds ahead of a lot of people that do the same shit that exist in the same vein as me and they just do really basic shit and they're like they have personality of uh paint drying and they don't do like cooking segments or anything they just you know, pull up with some fast food and just are un are boring. And it's like, they're just, they're running numbers and they're successful and they don't have to like be all stressed out. But I put in uh, my heart and soul into the shit and just like, what's the return? It's not much. So I don't know, man. Uh, Stay True was a potential, potential change for a bigger movement and further exposure. But uh, consensus was like people, just people don't like change people get used to a product and I've, I've become a product I've become a brand I've become like a coca-cola like people don't want when when people come here for black hoodie they don't want like they want their coca-cola they don't want a sprite and I was maybe turning into a you know a sprite let's for, for for a metaphorical example of that so yeah I don't know I just I'm just at like a frustration point I guess and I don't know how I'm gonna succeed or get bigger and maybe this name is holding me back that's how i feel maybe this name is holding me back and it has been holding me back so it's just an interesting to th interesting thing to think about and i don't really know how to change it moving forward because i feel stuck in it and i do and will say though like the one thing that does suck is like my intro is banger like the black hoodie i'm back cooking he's good like it's very catchy 
that's like one of those random once in a lifetime like just banger things and i don't know how to get away from that because that's that's like etched in into this channel and i wouldn't want to change it i would always want to keep that intro and i you know i would but then it's confusing though if i switch to something else can i be black hoodie the character in a wider movement of like a name that is more appealing to masses that would you know make people subscribe more i don't know so it's very very interesting have you ever considered starting another channel like uh i don't know if you understand you clearly don't understand what it takes to even get monetized on youtube first of all like i i don't have the financial freedom to be starting other channels like i i don't i need to make income i have to live life like i i feel like we live in this world where people think youtubers are magical unicorns like i am a normal human being that barely survives with what i make on youtube and like i put a lot of time and effort i upload almost every single day and it's like you know i see like i'm trying to grind for the ultimate goal but you can't just be starting other channels like I, you you might you might get lucky and start making money and you you have to make you have to get big enough and have enough watch time hours in under a year to even get monetized like i can't just pour a bunch of effort into another channel that's not going to pay me any money like it's just it's like it's impossible to even build this channel as far as i have it's taken me three years to get where i'm at so it's like you can't yeah just starting other channels is until you have a million followers and you're making bank and it's, it's you're just laughing like you're just living that laugh life of youtube until you're doing that you don't have the freedom to just start another channel at your leisure because it it's a nice idea do you know what i mean Okay, so where are we at here? Why don't you get a job so you can be independent and support yourself? Well, myself, I pay all my own bills. I still pay bills. I pay rent still. It's not as much as I used to because I'm chilling with my sister for a bit. And my life went tits up. And I did a video on that. Um, now, here's the thing about getting a job and supporting myself. I've done that since I was 20 years old. I've worked fucking 60, 70 hours a week or more 80 hours a week at two jobs living in Toronto while doing YouTube. I've been on my grind. I've done the life of working all the fucking jobs and doing YouTube. So like on top of being a hustler with working jobs, I've also hustled even further with trying to build the dream of YouTube. Now I'm in a scenario where I can actually just go all in on the dream and try to make it fucking come true and get away from the jobs and the work world life because I don't want to exist there anymore because I have this opportunity to not exist there anymore if I can make the fucking dreams come true, which at a certain point in your life, you got to go all in. You got to risk it. You can't playing it safe and working the jobs has never garnered me huge success. It's never led me to the fucking promised land that I'm looking for. So it's like I'm trading time for bullshit money. Okay, I'm trading time. Trading time. Time is the the the, the most uh, valuable commodity that you have in this life. You can't get time back. So you're trading time for twenty dollars an hour or whatever it is, roughly. And then your dream is sitting on the shelf because you can't put a ton of effort into it. I'm at like a tipping point where now I have the opportunity to just go all in on the dream. I've done the fucking decade of working jobs. It has gotten me absolutely fucking nowhere. So it's like, why would I? go back to that and also i am self-sufficient i am independent financially like i don't depend on anybody for money like so i don't know what you're talking about there can i request eating tacos you sure can i do love good tacos so I'm down with it. I like the name change, but black hoodie is so you. I can see your followers wearing black hoodies. I already wear one almost every day. I mean, yeah, I've just, I do, I, I like the brand. Like, I just feel like I've, I've, I have pigeonholed myself in, into, into the brand, which is, 
it's not a bad thing really i just i just think that it's somehow through through youtube it's like it's holding me back i i just feel like youtube like doesn't recommend me as much because of the name or something i don't know what it is but it is what it is Okay, where are we at here? I just actually want to answer some of these questions, so just bear with me. I'm just going back in the chat here. And we are pretty far back. Holy fuck. Hit up a freestyle. I did it in the beginning. I will again maybe sometime. What about yellow? What about yellow hoodie like you were saying in the video? <laughs> I don't know. Yellow hoodies, like, I could just see people cr crying about it. Like, it just they'll just be like no you're black hoodie like people don't like change man it's it, they just don't so i don't know to be honest when i did change my name to stay true like i noticed like a 50 percent drop in like uh like no noticeability like obviously like my emblem people didn't know it was me so they weren't clicking the you know just people didn't know I love watching yourself. I don't care what you call yourself. See, that's legit because you understand. It's like, it doesn't matter what I'm called. <laughs> as long as I show up with my content, then it's the same thing, right? Like, I don't know. It's weird seeing a non-pitch black round. background. Yeah. The reason why it's pitch black usually in my videos is because po like post-production, I do like color correction. So what you're seeing here is what it looks like usually raw, like before I do all the editing. It's, it's extremely hazy, though, right now. That's something I can't explain. I don't know why it's so fucking hazy. The intro is fire. Yeah, that's just the problem. Like, I that it's such, like, a part of my channel that I can't get, can't get away from. Big up from Poland. Shout out Poland. That would be dope to go there. I thought the name change was right on. What you got here won't let you get... What you got here won't let you get there. Don't stifle your creativity thinking you're catering to the masses. Yeah, I think you're. I, what you're saying is like to break out of the box further than I put myself in. So I get what you're saying. Uh, it's not about the name, but your content, and that's legit. Yeah, I know. I, I know, but people get all weird about the change, so I don't know what to do. We'll see. I might... It's truly a full-time job, I'm sure. It is, man, especially the cooking stuff. Like, it's like you got to conceptualize the video. You go get the stuff. You have to prep all the ingredients. You have to get all the, the bowls and dishes and all the perfect things ready. Then you have to do all the camera angles when you're actually making the video of the cooking. You have to execute on all those, like, final shots. Da, 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 and then you take it to the thing. You do the actual mukbang then you have to offload it to your computer then you have to edit a cooking segment and a mukbang segment and you have to color correct everything and then you gotta off you gotta you bounce that out that takes an hour two hours once that's bounced out then you gotta upload it to youtube which takes another hour like it's just it's an eight hour day like easily easily and my here's the thing about being a youtuber too you're never not thinking like you're never you're always like even when i'm off the clock like when i'm not when, I, when i'm done editing my video i'm always like figuring out how to like optimize my my search shit and like other ways to get exposure and like do i have to make other pages should i start a facebook page like all these things and then on top of that while i'm laying there like done my work for the day i'm like Hey, well, so how's tomorrow going to go? Like what I, so I'm like strategizing about tomorrow's video and I have to think about the cooking segment on that and how I'm going to execute on that and like what ingredients I'm going to use and what is this sauce and this technique. And then I'm also thinking about like, oh, what cool, what cool concept or like what cool food would like set me apart or what, uh, what, what title should the video be? Like, you're never not thinking about it. You're like, I'm constantly creating like tomorrow's video after today is like, I'm all, and, and the next day and the next, like, I'm always thinking like a week ahead, like what good videos could I do? And also how do I make it so I can do this and not become fat as fuck? <laughs> That's another struggle, man. It's like, I don't want to become like a Nick Akato avocado. I don't want to gain a hundred pounds. He's gained a hundred pounds since he started. Like, 
I'm not trying to do that to myself. So it's like, how do I optimize? How to like, it's crazy. You're always thinking, you're always thinking. I believe you have to reach a certain amount of followers. So in order, okay. So in order to get monetized on YouTube now, now it's much harder, but the, the criteria is this, you have to hit, have a thousand subscribers. Uh, you have to have 4,000 watch hours, hours of watch, 4,000 hours of watch time. That's the hard part in a 12 month span. And there's one other criteria, a thousand followers, 4,000 hours of watch time, which is the hard part within 12 months, I guess that's the criteria, but that's very hard to achieve nowadays. The thousand subscribers isn't super hard to get to, but it's the 4,000 hours of watch time in 12 months. To get 4,000 hours of watch time means they wanna see that people are actually coming with your videos and fucking with your videos for a good long time. And that is very, very hard lately, man. It's uh, it's not easy to, to do that, so. Um, yeah, it's just not it's not easy to get monetized on on YouTube anymore. You have to have content that's like fire that people are watching and it's hard it's hard to break through the noise. There's just so much going on. There's it's hard to be original, man. Like it's a mukbang ASMR, it's all very watered down now. It's super saturated market. You know, mukbang is becoming slowly more unpopular. Like it's just not, you know, you look at people like Kimi for example, she has a, a million followers. Per video, she's getting 24,000, 30,000 views. That's like, uh, what, what type of retention is that? That's like uh, 10%. So she, that's, that's 3% retention, audience retention. 3% audience retention. That's brutal. Because views are what matter to a YouTuber. It doesn't even matter if you have, like subscribers really doesn't, like it matters, but it doesn't matter that much. If you have 2,000 subscribers, but you're dropping videos that are like, these crazy bangers that the algorithm loves that are just like super strange, like interesting content, but you have 2000 subscribers and you're getting 250,000 views, 500,000 views. Cause your content's getting like suggested in the algorithm. You're going to make bank. Like you're going to, you're killing it. But if you have like me or like someone like a Kimi or whatever, if you have 50,000, hundred thousand, 200,000, 500,000, but you're dropping vids and you're getting 40,000 views, then you're it's you're not doing well it's just that's you're just you're struggling you're just watching your whole life your whole effort all these hours you're just watching it slowly die a sad death going down the drain and it's like i'm just keep i just keep pushing keep grinding trying to step up my content trying to make things better da, 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 constant 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 trying trying to grow trying to be better and you know i just i don't see huge results and it's very very uh, frustrating. It makes me some days I'm just like, I should just pack this whole shit in. I should just quit everything, fucking give up on all my dreams and just go do the fucking society life. Just, but I'm, I'm trapped too. It's like, I don't have any real life qualifications. I don't, you know, I'm a smart person, but I don't have the, I don't know how, like, what am I going to get hired for? I mean, I've learned a lot about social media marketing and, and how to build an audience and search engine optimization. And I know how to edit. I know how to, you know, make music. I know how to produce stuff. I like, I have all these skills. It's just like, but like, where do I put those? Who's good. And who's going to hire me and pay me? Well, I don't, I don't know. Cause I don't have a trade. Like I don't have, I'm not a plumber or something like that. And I don't want to be that. If I have to go be a plumber in my life, I will fucking kill myself. Like I would rather be dead. If I, if I have to live a life where I go do some fucking job, like plumbing or whatever, that that's like, like a trade work and no, not to shit on trades. Like trades are great. If that's for you, that's for you. Like, that's awesome. But for me, if I had to do, if I do that every day, I'd rather be dead. Just kill me now. So I don't want to live a life where I don't get to exist in my, in my like purposeful thing. Like I feel I have purpose in, in these areas. And I'd love to be successful off them, but it's very, very hard. It's very difficult to be, to break through, to break through the noise and, uh, you know, to be entrepreneurial and, and make the money. But 
you know, there's a lot of people out here uh, faking it for the funk, and they're making they're making a ton of money, and they're they're disingenuous, they're not authentic, they really have probably pretty much no talent. Uh, but so for some people, pe for some reason, people love them, and they're just laughing all the way to the bank. They're not they're 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 just not stressing, and it's all it's all good. It's all gravy, baby. It's all good for them. But and they're not even trying to progress, grow. They're not even trying to spread any sort of positivity. They're not trying to be authentic. They're not trying to have a message they're not trying to inspire anybody they're just they're just gluttonously soaking in all this shit and just really providing no value so it's very interesting Bree thompson risk it for the biscuit that's correct i mean that's what i'm trying to do but hopefully the biscuit will come if it doesn't then at least i tried right Basically, I'm at the point in my life where I'm like, crown me or slit my throat. Like, I just, it's like, crown me, like, king me or 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 deem me dead. Because I got nothing else in the middle. I, I don't want to live in the middle. I don't want to live in the middle. And I'm I'm not out here trying to be, like, like greedy with the shits. Like, I don't, I don't want to be some massive you know crazy money making son of son of a bitch like i want to be like a post malone like i just i'm a humble dude who just wants to be happy doing what he wants to do and make a good little living like and for me a good little living isn't much like i just like you know maybe like 100k like <laughs> i'd be happy making the 100k 200k a year i'd be just i'd be so happy just having my own business serving the world doing the things that i love to do and helping people through this and you know cooking music whatever what it is whatever it is that i have to offer and make just like a nice little living like i don't even care about like millions of dollars or like being a globe trotting son of a bitch on a private jet and like gloating in front of everybody like that's not my vibe at all so like you know i'm not out here for that i just want to be like a humble dude of the people who who has a nice stress-free life getting paid to do what he loves or what he's good at it's very you know no a little a little 100k to 200k is a very nice living that's what i'm saying don't you get that like that's a very modest successful life like People that go into entertainment industry strive for millions. Like I'm saying, I don't need to be the millions guy. Like I'm not looking for that. I, 100 to 200K is a nice, modest, successful living. Like, you know, there's firefighters make 100 grand a year. That's a normal person, like job living. That's a normal person life. That's just a successful. I'm just saying I'd like to make a nice, comfy, successful living doing what i love you know what i mean i'm not trying to like be like oh i need a private jet you know i'm not l looking for that that's not what i'm out here for i'm saying there's a lot of other youtubers out here stephanie sue for example she's making fucking like millions of dollars a year and it's like doesn't seem very grateful about it trish paytas probably making a ton of money doesn't seem very grateful doesn't seem very humble about it i'm just saying there's all these toxic trashy fucking youtube people out here making crazy money off of pretty much not doing much and they're not very grateful for it and they, they're not humble that's what i'm saying 100k is nice yeah that's what i'm saying i don't need it like 100k is a lot of money i understand that that's a great living but I, i'm recognizing that that is a great living to get paid to do what you love and there's people out here on the makes i think it's something like 200 grand a month, $200,000 a month for not speaking and just like squinting and chewing into a camera because his, his audio's kind of good. Like, it's not even that good. Like what? So it's insane, man. Like, it's just, it's just people are out here cha like hoarding money not being talented somehow being propped up by by i don't know these morons of society that are just propping up this drama and this this mindless shit and making these people multimillionaires and they're not even grateful 
Like they're not even saying thank you. They don't seem to be like humble about it. It's just like, look at me and my new fucking pink Mercedes and my house in LA and hey guys, my life and my life is so fucking hard. Like Trisha Paytas is always breaking down and crying and shit. It's like, but bitch, you did it to yourself. Like you're constantly creating this drama in your life. And clearly you're, you like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> so it's just like, that's what I'm saying is I would be very happy and grateful and humble to make a nice little piece of change doing what I love. That's it. That's it. That's the end goal. Like, and, and you're never going to get there doing the norm. You're never going to get there working the job in society really like unless you have a nice good one like like a firefighter or a doctor or whatever if you're one of those people or maybe you work in like diamond drilling in in a mine you probably make good money then but like i can't do that that shit's not my calling like it's that's uh, soul sucking to me and it's just it's not for me like i just you know and i'm stuck i'm being stubborn in it and you know what i'm young enough to to still have the 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 time to attempt these dreams and shit and cooking is is fucking forever. Like I I could be a I could be a guy fieri like in the future. Like I could you can be on cooking shows or or have a cooking show or do stuff like with munchies or vice or uh, you know bon appetit and shit like that. Like those jobs are like I I can translate my cooking skills into the future and be 40, 50, 60 years old like, you know, Julia Childs and Jacques Pepin, these these people like Bobby Flay like you know so for right now I, I have the ability to go all in on shit and see and just hope that it might work out and it may not i don't know so it's like but i'd rather taste take the risk and die knowing that i fucking tried to fulfill my soul's purpose or what i feel like is my calling and and followed my heart and my north star rather than just succumbing to the life of the fucking mundane grind of the same shit that doesn't inspire me at all trading hours of my one life on this planet for fucking twenty dollars an hour, thirty dollars an hour, fifty fifty. If I was trading fifty dollars an hour, that's great money. Yes, I understand. But mm, when you see a different, when when you've undone yourself from the matrix and you see the possibility of fifty dollars an hour in the scheme of entertainment and YouTube and ad dollars and things like that, that's like peanuts. And I'd way rather live my take the risk to potentially make that crazy bigger money life doing things that i love because the possibility is there it's all about potential but it is all about going all in and that's what i've been trying to do is go all in but it's just very tough when you don't see the when you don't see the return on investment and uh it's it's even tougher when you see people who don't really deserve it getting it instead of you and you but that's the world man that's the state of the world there's so many talented people in the world that just get overlooked undermined and don't get their shine really or the shine that they, des they deserve there's so many pe in the people world people in the world that are deserve it of so much more and i'm not sitting here trying to act entitled because i'm not i'm certainly not entitled at all i don't think i'm like that special but i do believe i, I bring a uh a greater value than a lot of people who are m certainly more successful than I am. You know what I mean? So the, the people like the Ace family, it's like, what are you guys bringing to the table? A couple cute kids, like just a bunch in this guy's a piece of shit cheating on his wife and all this stuff. And just like, but yes, 20 million followers and they're just making a bag every day. But for what? Like this world has been so pre-programmed and conditioned and that's, hey, if we really, really want to get another, a little deeper on, on the real shit with, with Mukbang, that's what's so frustrating too, is like the people who do make it big in this shit are the people who just pull up with uh, an ungodly amount of fast food in front of them and the, uh, the, the branding on their, on their thumbnail is just full of the, the branding. And that's why people come and they click is because you've been socially conditioned to recognize those brands and they are, they govern your mind. Like McDonald's governs your mind, Chipotle, Starbucks, it's all been programmed into you. And that's you, you, you're, oh, well, I know. And in your head, 
when somebody's eating a Burger King, like a Whopper, and shout out Whoppers, like I love Whoppers, I love Big Macs, like I have nothing, no problem with this, but it's the psychology. If you understand the psychology of why. So people pull up to the video and because you're eating a Whopper or a Big Mac and they're laying in bed at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. and they're starving, and uh, when, when you bite that on camera, they can taste it in their mouth in because they ha know what it tastes like. They've been to McDonald's. They've had a Whopper or Burger King. They, they, they've had uh, Chipotle. They've had they've had this experience in their mouth. So it's like that translates. Right. It's like that dopamine is like releasing because they've had it and you've been just programmed by that food. And so have I. I fucking love that shit. So there's no, nothing wrong with that. It's just. Um, that's why like, especially like the cooking mukbangs, there's so much effort, but they don't even get the views. So it's like, is it really worth it? Or should I just pull up with fast food? Right? Cause the fast food always does better in views and views equate to money. So it's, I understand how it's easy to like pull up with the fast food and sell out for money because money makes life comfortable. And when when you're struggling and you're like, fuck, if I could, if I just pull up at the fast food 15 times a month, that's probably 15 times more the bag. Right. So I understand like how it's, how it's easy, but I understand the psychology of why people pull up to those videos too. It's like that you see McDonald's, you're like, fuck, I love McDonald's so much. I just want to go eat some McDonald's, but I can't cause it's two, 3 AM and I'm fucking snowed in, in Ontario. <laughs> and you're like, well, might as well just watch this guy eat a Big Mac and then kind of be able to at least kind of taste it. But if I make myself some home burger or whatever I make at home, you can only imagine just barely how that might taste to you because you've never had it. You've never tried my sauce. Like you've never tried my, my cooking. So it doesn't translate. It looks good. Sure, you can recognize that it looks great, but psychologically in your mind and on your taste buds, you don't know what that tastes like. So you're sitting there like, oh, you know, the cooking was cool and that looks delicious, but it's less appealing. So it's very interesting. Psychology is very interesting. I've been noted like being really put on. If you want to dominate marketing and social media, you need to understand the psych psychological state of a, of a person of, uh, in the mass. Just what what people like, like and, and why they like it. Psychology is very interesting. Put out a video where you just eat like a whole cabbage, like just a plain cabbage. <laughs> That's so strange. Not even pickled. You're a smart guy, impressive knowledge about these social media things. Yeah, well, here, but that's the thing is like, I'm smart, but I have too much integrity. I have too much strength of character. Like, I don't want to do things that make me feel gross about myself. I don't want to do sellout stuff. I, and I'm all about putting out the content that I want to put out. I always do. I've never subscribed to the challenges. I've never eaten the seafood because it's fucking popping. I've never done all these things. Like, I really haven't. Uh, lately, I've been a little bit... I switched up my titling just because I feel like... I feel like the uh, the mukbang... Uh, the mukbang... Titles are so standardized now that's like people are less likely to click on it just because it's so obvious. It's like eating large Burger King order. No, no, no. So now I've been trying to switch up my titles to make them more appealing on a wide scale. Like if you were just a random dude who didn't watch any mukbang or anything and you were scrolling through and you saw like, like the other day, for example, I know he's just mukbang and eating food, but yo, that sounds fucked up and interesting. Let me get in there. So maybe I could convert, convert some people a little bit. You know what I mean? And it's true. That's not even a clickbait title. My French teacher did beat kids. Like it was actually fucked up. He legitimately was physically aggressive with children and like left marks on them and hurt them. Like it was actually fucked. And I don't know how he got away with it for so long, but he did. But yeah, the, the problem with being intelligent about these things is that like like a Nick Akato, like he's a smart guy. He really is. And I, you could say that he's not, but when he goes to do his tea videos, he's super articulate. He's got a great vocabulary and he's got all the points and everything. It's all broken down. It's very meticulous. He's very calculated. He clearly does all the dumb shit because he understands the dumb shit about 
what the psychology of people and what the people want to see and that is senseless mindless drama bullshit that people get to weigh in and have an opinion on because people in the social the the, the in, in in the you know the public forum side of things they love to have their opinion everybody wants to have their opinion and people love to think that their opinion is what matters and so when you have a toxic community where there are that's why politics and shit are so fucking like addicting to people and people love the left and the right and like who's this and who's that and da, da, da. that's the same thing public forum on youtube it's like you get to come in to some to some problematic scenario that feels important even though it's not and you get to have your say and you get to feel important for a moment and then you get to go to war against the other side which is the na the naysayers and the likers and the naysayers are well no 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 and then the likers are well this is why this and then so you get to have like this feeling of importance in this public opinion and battle and that's why people love fucking drama because they love to take sides and they love to to go to war social war just like but it's all fucking keyboard warriors commenters and it's just it doesn't go anywhere it's it's fr it's futile it's 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 it, 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 it it's nonsensical it just doesn't fucking matter and then there's people like me which like if you go to somebody like a, like a nick Cotto or whoever that's like problematic like that if you look at their if you have a a big dislike ratio on your videos chances are you're very successful I feel the more haters you have, the more you're a meme, the more that you have in your public forum, a bunch of people not fucking with these people and that, then you're probably going to be more successful on my channel, which is a point of pride for me is that if you go, if I go into my analytics and I look at my like to dislike percentage, my, my percentage, I, my videos rank 97% average of like to dislike 97 percent, and i promise you that other three percent of of the hate the the the, co the comments the, the the thumbs down that three percent are probably people who are minorly envious or jealous of me and then the last little one and a half percent are people who authentically just hate my face because let's 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 be honest in this world there's I don't care who you are. I don't care how fucking on the throne and, you know, you're of Jesus and everybody's good. And, you know, I promise you there's somebody in your life that you've randomly come across and just looked at their face and been like, I don't like your face. I want to punch your face. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why. It's just your face. I don't like it. So there, there's always that percentage. But I'm ha – and, and that's, I guess, my, my angle in this shit or like – a point of pride and, and why I, why I enjoy that is like that 97% means that I have a true base of people that actually fuck with me and are like loyal and would ride for me and would like follow me into war if I, if they had to, you know what I mean? And, and will go the distance with me and like our actual fucking, like it's respect it's respect. Like first comes the respect, then comes the money, then comes the power. Like I would rather have respect on my name because I don't want to be, you know, like this, this weird, like social, like this clown where it's like my attention is only because of this, of, of, of a lot of disrespect, really dislike. I'd rather have the respect because I'd rather go the distance. I'd rather make a career out of it. I'd rather 15 down, years down the road be like a Gary V. Like I, I want to have people showing up to a seminar, you know what I mean? Or just taking my advice or listening to me on some shit or, or respecting and me enough to buy an album from me or respecting me enough to buy a cookbook from me or respecting me enough to buy a sauce from me. I think long-term longevity is to have respect. And the only way you have respect is when you stay true to your character, when you have morals and you have integrity. So I guess that's just, this is sort of, I have to preach to myself on the daily inside my mind is like, just, just keep with, keep being real, keep being true, stay with the shit. Just, you know, 
prog- uh, persevere, push on, be yourself, and you will build a loyal fucking you know army of people who actually fucking ride with you for the for for the distance for, for the long term. And I, I think that's a better, not even, I don't think it's a better approach. It's the only approach I know. The only thing I can be is myself. The only thing I can be is authentically myself. That's the only thing I could be. What else can I be? I don't want to be some fake shit. I don't want to be some buffoon. I don't want to be some clown. I don't want to be out here sacrificing, basically selling my soul for some sellout content. I don't want to do pranks. I don't want to go destruct people's property for a fucking laugh and a click on the internet. I don't want to make myself 400 pounds for monetary gain. Uh, I don't want to kill myself for monetary gain. Like I do, I go about this shit in a very like calculated way to where I try to, I keep my body pretty decent. Like I'm not out. And as soon as I see myself like getting away from myself, I reel it in. Like I pull myself back. Like I'm self-respecting. So I don't know, maybe these are traits that are are few and far between in this day and age. And it's, I guess it's just a sad state of affairs. Really. It's hard. It's hard to come by people who actually ha- have like care for things like care for a craft, care for art, care for the, the skill that goes into that craft. Like, I just feel like everything, like things don't go appreciated as much as they should when, when there's clearly love and effort put into them. That's just a sad state of affairs. have another drinky poo i'm dead ass sober (laughs) like legitimately i'm dead ass sober i'm chilling in the afternoon i was just working on business and i figured i would go live this is just how this is how i think you guys this is my mind like this shit never shuts up like when i'm off camera like i am constantly dwelling in here just thinking like about how ridiculous it all is like the shit that gets attention and shine and and is successful it's like the world is actually ass backwards i feel like i'm taking crazy pills 90 percent of the time in my life i'm just like i I just really step back and i look at it i'm like why 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 is that successful and i try to look at the psychology of it it all comes back to psychology if you can understand psychology of humans you'll be more successful in your life in terms of a social marketing entrepreneurial way because that's you because then I, it's a bad word to say, but you can learn to manipulate people. And that's what Nikocado Avocado does. He manipulates people into being in his atmosphere, whether it be good or bad. And he has no shame. He doesn't give a fuck. He just wants you there. He needs you there. And he's manipulating you to be there. And you and I don't want to say you guys, but everybody, you know, we're all falling for it. Hey, I still go just to just to know, just to see what's going on. So he got me too. And I'm out here being all woke and enlightened, but it's like, you got me, you got me. And I could admit it. Like I'll, I check in, I see what's up. I'm like, Oh, what's going on now? I don't think it ultimately it's, it's all, it's all futile, dumb shit. Like it doesn't, at the end of the day, like, do we really need to be worrying about these two people who eat food and how they don't like each other? Like it's all stupid. You know, there's bigger, there's bigger fish to fry. There's bigger things to worry about, but human nature we love we love to look at car crashes we love a car we love a good car wreck um you know we love to hear the sh- we we love to see that shit we love to hear about you know stories about my ex stories about cheating we love to hear about how my life fell apart we love these things you know cuz it's it's a real rugged raw side of life that a lot of people don't have the fucking balls to own up and live and live to, to express, to show the world. Like, and when it does happen, it's, it's relatable. So like, there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't know. That's why reality TV is so fucking good too. I know some of it's kind of scripted and whatnot, but it's kind of, it's kind of scripted. It's like set up for it to become, you know, sketchy, like temptation Island, like, like couples cheating and stuff like that shit is. And then, you get on, you get on a bandwagon and you you like love that character and like you're going to bat for that character and you're, you feel, you have like this burning thing inside. You're like, uh, and you resonate with that character. And then somebody else on this side resonates with the other character. And like, they're like, Oh no, 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 no. How dare you? Like we're for this, we're, we're team Casey and your team Sarah. And like, and then there's just all this, you know, going to war. 
So it's just, I don't know. It's interesting. Very interesting. If you want respect, shut up about money and stop contradicting yourself. I understand that. That's a, that's a fair point. Um, it's just a matter of when you're going all in on something that you're trying to build respect in. Unfortunately, the world requires money. So that's the only thing about money. I'm not trying to be a crazy millionaire. Like that's not the thing, but you just, in order to go all in a thing, all in on the thing to build respect, you do need to be able to have money to fuel your thing. Like life isn't free. So you do need money, but that's a fair point. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give you that. So on point, let's take Steven Sushi for example. Some people love him, others not so much. Some are just ride or die followers regardless of the content and some just show up to bad with him. Well, that's a thing. The more people you get in the comments talking shit about you, really, really you're better off. Your cooking is what sets you apart. If you're getting less views or money from Cookbang's vids, it's just, but it's just what you love to do, then, then so be it for now, but stick to it. It will change. I mean, I totally get where you're coming from. I understand. And yes, it is a passion point for me and I don't intend to give it up. And I do believe that that could be like the ticket to a, to a bigger, more effective, you know, situation for me. But uh, it's just difficult. It's difficult to persevere when you do something and it's not showing proof of, it's not proof positive of, of like, uh, it's going to pay off one day, you know, but I guess that's having faith and in the process and just, and just continuing to do the thing you love and, and hoping, having faith that it'll work out for you. Um, and if it's what you love, then you should always keep doing it. I, I totally agree. I'm right there with you. Um, but, uh, it's just, it's taxing. It's mentally taxing. I don't know how else to explain it other than it's mentally taxing. So there's that. I badmouth crybaby avocado here. We, <laughs> I'm not even badmouthing him. I'm just, I'm just stating facts about him. Like he just, that's how he operates. And I think that's why you're in the predicament you are now because society is trained to think a certain way. Pretty much, yeah. He's stoned. Guys, you got, you guys got, another thing is like, you guys got to stop with the whole, I'm, I'm high in my videos. I told you this a long time ago. I had a pan. I used to smoke weed from uh, 14 to about 20. I had my first insane panic attack from smoking weed. I don't. I haven't smoked weed since. I don't smoke weed. I can't smoke weed. It gives me insane anxiety. I have panic attacks. I basically end up in the hospital saying I'm dying, which I'm not. But I just I can't. Marijuana does not, not sit well with me at all. So I don't smoke weed. I love drinking. Drinking, I will say that, but I currently am not drunk at all. I am dead ass sober because um, I'm dry off the bottle now for a little bit. I I went, I was just October, like October, November, December, just so much going on. Like from Halloween till Christmas, I was just way too many drinks. So I'm, uh, I haven't been drinking for a couple weeks now and it's all good. <laughs> and I don't want to drink again actually until I think I'm going to go. Definitely dry January. Really no reason to drink in February. That's the good thing is like there's no holidays now. There's like no reason. Like it's cold. It's winter. I could just focus on my shit and there's no like holidays. There's no anything like that. So I don't think I want to drink till I think March. Maybe March would be cool. Would you ever do ayahuasca? Uh, to be honest, yeah. I think I, like I'm, you know, I'm intimidated by those things like a DMT or ayahuasca, but I would love to. I think it would be a life experience that I need to do in my life. I really do believe that, yeah. Because I just, I want to, I want to enter that other like spiritual realm and like see it for myself and experience it for myself. And, I, and you know what? I do want to come face to face with like these like demons or these like issues in myself and see if they can be resolved. Um, you know, it'd be cool if I did ayahuasca and I was absolved of desire. I think desire is the first, the most contributing factor to like personal torture in this life. 
I feel like the less you desire things in this life, the like the happier you'll be. And I'm so, so plagued by desire. I desire to be successful in things that are innately or inherently interesting to me. And I feel that I have competence in, and I want them rewarded in, 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 in many different ways, uh, both monetarily and accolade wise. And it's just like, Having that desire is fucking torturous. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Understand Buddhism is just like, let go of everything, want for nothing, know that you're completely whole in yourself and you don't need anything beyond fresh water, good air, and some fucking food in your belly. And like, you know, maybe a, a couple nice people to talk to. Real shit, like, real shit. And if you can be happy with, with those bears, you can just be cool with that and just like, kind of like a dog you just exist you just chill it's easy like you don't you don't want for nothing you don't need for nothing you just the bare essentials and just happiness being just being just being here being present but unfortunately like that's boring as fuck and i don't know if life is a playground if like life feels like a playground to me and i don't think i came here to just sit in the sandbox and chill like i don't i don't know that i want to just sit in a sandbox and chill like i i want to go play on the monkey bars like i want to go fucking slide the slide like and that to me sliding the slide is like doing cool shit like music is sliding the slide doing the monkey bars is mukbanging like do you know what i mean if we're using metaphors here so just delete nick <laughs> that's impossible no one's ever just gonna get deleted no one's ever gonna just like get canceled cancel culture is so hilarious to me because people want to preach it but while you're preaching it you're preaching it under the person's video that you're trying to cancel and that perpetuates them that makes them more successful so you can't cancel people when you're commenting cancel on their videos now unfortunately i know that the internet is run by 8 to 10 to 12 to 14 year olds you know what i mean it just it's 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 the reality of the situation children run the internet and let's just be honest they're not mentally evolved enough to, to know that they're perpetuating anything because they didn't even know the word perpetuate because they're fucking eight, 10, 12, whatever years old. And they're just, they're just hopping on the movement. It's like when I was back that age, I didn't know shit. I wouldn't have known shit. I wouldn't have known any better. And that's fine. Cause I was 12. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like you're, I, I'm 12. Like it's, it's, it's negligible, but unfortunately 12 year olds all have a mobile device and they are the ones with the most free time in the world with nothing to do and all the shit to go fucking discover and just being in kids and they just have fucking da -da 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 freedom and they, and you know, they're at school and it's like, Oh, do you like Nick Nicocado or do you like Stephanie Sue? And then the, this 12 years old, well, Stephanie is like, so just, she's such a nice, funny character. And like, just Nick, he's so mean. And then like, and then this other girl's like, yeah fuck nick like fuck nick and then this kid's like no but like but nick is so cool like i love his hair and his bird and i just love the way he laughs and he eats ramen and then it's just that's that's the internet <laughs> real shit and unfortunately uh i don't appeal to that and I don't want to appeal to that. I don't want to be a kid content creator. Like, why do you think he opens his videos with, it's me, Nick Acado, Avocado. And then he's like, we're back home. That was a little country version of his, but it's just, if you look at children's programming, once again, it's loud high pitch voices cartoon characters it's bright it's it's over energized it's overzealous it's all of that and if you look at a stephanie sue for example she's got a mousy high voice she's just popping off at the lip constantly it's just and then like be love like uh what's up my be love like that's what engages children so you i'm sorry if this is really loud for you guys it's just i that's what my ears deal with every time i click into one of these children catering to annoying humans who by the way are selling you a load of bullshit right off top because if you go to their house in real life promise you they ain't screaming like that 
Promise you, they ain't talking like how they do on camera. Promise you. But come to my channel, you hang out with me in real life. Promise you. Same guy. Same fucking dude. <laughs> Chilling right here, talking to you. Like, being honest. Come to my channel, it's, it's hey, welcome to this weird shit I do on the internet. Because this is some weird shit that we do on the internet. Come to my channel. Hey, what up, world? What's good with y'all? Hope you're doing very well. That's how I feel. I hope you are doing very well. And what is good with y'all? What up, world? That's me. That's just it. That's what. That's like, so unfortunately, I don't have a loud, annoying character, and that's that's a good word to say, character, because that's all these people are characters, and they're and they, and they lying. So, yeah. And I don't do, and you know, I speak, I, I, I talk about adult things, I use adult vocabulary, um, and that's not appealing to, to kids. So that's an issue too. <laughs> Meth is good too. <laughs> Drop some acid, bro. Him. You know what? I would like weirdly love to, but I'm once again too scared. I'm such a, I'm honestly such a pussy when it comes to drugs to the fact that like, I'm just so afraid of releasing control. Like I don't like releasing control. The only type of like, that's why I like drinking so much. Cause I'd never feel like I'm out of control. I just feel like stoked and like more, um, expressive in my like emotions and in my thoughts and honestly when i drink my thoughts become even like more activated in a sense depending how much i drink though there is like obviously that limit of way too much fucking alcohol and then it's like i can't even express anything because i'm just got like the gooby mouth and i just i'm just drunk as fuck but i do like that's i don't know alcohol i just never feel like out of control you know what i mean so but anything else i like a psychedelic and stuff i just i they scare me man like all my times doing mushrooms I just had, so, I have such a hard time just letting them be, like letting the process take over. Like I just, I get so paranoid about like <laughs> I'm dying or this feels so unnatural and weird and yeah. Drinking vodka is where it's at a hundred. Yeah, that's, that's me. That's my, that's my poison of choice. I just like to sip vodka and just feel like a little more jovial, a little more like my mind's clicking on a little faster cylinder in terms of like thoughts. Like I'm almost, almost when I get drunk, there's this thing that activates where I feel like this is coming into me, like even like, like mainlining ideas, like both, you know, be it comedic or thought, just general thought or like music. I just have this like weird, it's like, and it's a perfect amount too. I'm talking like seven ounces in like eight ounces of hard liquor in vodka do I start to feel that? And then if I go too far, then the scales have tipped and I'm like, I'm in drunk territory and it's like, okay, that's, you know, I'm drunk. So it's like a little different, but I suffered with depression, and anxiety, and I was addicted to cutting myself. Don't understand me wrong. I'm not trying to get attention, but this channel cured it. So thanks hoodie so much. Yo, that's amazing. See that. And that, that those are the comments that like make me like keep going, I guess, or like give me, a sense of like, I'm doing something right here. Like I'm doing something good here. I am providing some sort of value because oftentimes I think to myself, I'm like, what fucking value am I providing? Like, what am I, what am I doing here? Like, what is this? And uh, to, to have those, those comments come in or, or they mean a lot to me. So I'm glad that you're doing better. And uh, I've been, I've gone through anxiety and depression myself and I never self harmed or anything, but um, I mean, that's just your, your way. So no judgment here. If that was how it was for you, if that's what made you get through it or, you know, gave you some sort of weird torturous relief. I don't know. I don't know how that mind process works, but I never did that. But I, I've certainly been through some crazy anxiety and panic issues in my life and I've come out on the other side, man. Like I feel like I'm so much better than I used to be. It's crazy. It's actually crazy because I never, ever, ever thought I would get back to a place of like normalcy. I've always been like pretty stable in my in my state, but like I just the torture of that anxiety. I never thought I'd come back and like really come out of it. 
but I, I have, I saw, I, and it's, it took me a decade. It took me 10 years to really go through all of the, to go through all of it. And then I don't know if I just, it's like, I suffered with it so long that it eventually became like a joke to me. Like, and that's, it took, it took me realizing after 10 years of this nonsensical fear that I was perpetuating inside myself to realize that, okay, nothing's happened to me up to this point in all these, you know, uh, near death moments inside of myself are these intense waves of just, I don't, you can't even put it into words. Like I've been in the sunken place. I've had outright full blown fucking meltdown panic attacks. I've been to the hospital. I've had like what I thought was having a heart attack so many times in my life. I've fainted. I've all like, I've done it all. I've done it all. Okay. I've had sleep panic attacks. I've had, you know, random life, just walking panic attacks. I've, I've had just the worst of the worst. And then after 10 years of it, I just think one day I, I got, my brain was just like, bruh, what the fuck are we doing here? You would have been dead time ago. Like, what? what's your stress? <laughs> I, I, I just, I think I got to the realization, like, your body is resilient. You're, you're, you're fine. So stop stressing about it. And then also, like, I guess I finally just, I've always had a hard time believing in a higher power or believing in a God or believing in, in a, you know, something like that. But as time's gone on, I, f I'm being, I feel like I'm being shown proof along the way, proof positive that there is some sort of a higher power that has my back and is like, when the time comes, I'm going to go like we all have to go. And I have no control over that. So I might as well not stress about it anyways. And I have faith in that when I do go, like I will be returned to those who are looking over me or who have my best interest at heart or who, you know, like return to sender in a sense. So I don't know if that makes any, any sense, but like returning to, to truth and seeing if I learned my lessons and things like that. I, I don't know. Like, I, do, I, I, I as time is going on, I'm, I'm believing that more that that's a real thing. But uh, yeah, I just my whole life, like I was never. This is the thing, I was never preconditioned or programmed by like my parents or anything. Like I never went to church. Religion was never pressed upon me. I've always been allowed to interpret life as I see it coming to me in terms of my real life experience, and I've always had a difficult time believing in something that I cannot see or really feel. And I haven't seen or felt the presence of a higher entity up until like recent years. And in recent years, there's just been some events in my life that have, that have allowed me to finally like let my guard down in, in my, I don't want to say disbelief, but in my, lack of proof of anything that have allowed me to kind of let my guard down and see these, these synchronicities or these almost signs in a way from energy that is otherworldly, that is not of me, that is here to help me and guide me along and allow me to have faith in possibility and potential and know that I am safe and know that I am cared for more deeply than I could even imagine. So yeah. I guess maybe that'll, uh, I don't know how long this has been. Let's check. I don't know. Oh, an hour and 15 minutes. So that got crazy for a while. Um, yeah, I got heated and mildly aggressive and uh, 
not heated. I just got passionate, I guess. And, you know, I went deep. I spit knowledge and it might seem like I'm a psychopath and some of you guys think I'm high or drunk or whatever, but that's just ludicrous and asinine to believe because this is just who I am, how my brain operates and how I think. And a lot of times you guys don't get to see this side of me because I don't know, it's just, it's not for everybody. And I just think a lot of people, you know, it's just, it's a little bit odd. Like when I'm here just smashing some food to my face, I don't think people really want to hear shit that goes this crazy. Um, and yeah, so got a little heated at one point, but I'm so sick and tired of people trying to impose their beliefs about me, about what I should do. And like, it's like, no, I'm going to live my life. I live my life. I'm going to do the things that I love to do. Hey, maybe I'm not the best singer in the world, but it makes me feel good. You know, people aren't the best dancers in the world, but you still dance in your fucking kitchen because you like to jam. You like to move that body to some fucking grooves and it's fun. Uh, unfortunately, I guess for me, I do it in the public eye and some people think that they should have an opinion about that, which I guess they're entitled to since I do it in the public eye. So there's that. But I mean, yeah, it is what it is. This is a good fun one. I love you guys that can rock with me and understand me and, and get on my level and uh yeah i just i, I want to keep keep the love alive keep the purpose passionate keep it going keep thriving try to grow and and i guess keep it real as fuck until the wheels fall off and just hope the shit really works out <laughs> in the long run so till the next one you know what to do eat good live well stay true